this is Dayworker Customs and today we're going to be making a 4th of July dress for a dog. Um, in particular this is for my dog Lily um, but I do make these to uh, sell on my Etsy shop and I just thought it would be kind of cute just to go through um, how I do this um, for those of you who would like to make your own dog clothes. Um, so this is kind of a tutorial on that. This pattern is a uh, Sophie and Friends pattern. It is um, called the Ships Ahoy dress. I'm going to be making variation A, um, which is really cute and I think it'll um, look good in these materials. My materials I've chosen are these two materials right here. Um, this is going to be the body of the dress and this is going to be the collar and the accent. So I think it'll go really cute together. And then the other material that we need, of course, is our interfacing. And this is Woven Fuse. It is like uh, Pellon's SF-101. It is a woven fusible, um, and it has glue on one side and then just kind of a woven, nice woven uh, texture on the other side here. So those are the fabrics and stabilizers that we're using and as you can see here on my table I have them all cut out and fused so like this is my collar and I needed a uh, woven fusing on that so I've already applied that to two of the four that were cut um, same for the body the upper bodice of the dress I've already cut and fused the woven fuse onto the back of that so it's ready to go and then of course we have the skirt here and then the uh, materials that make the little bow tie and then we have the um, d-ring loop here um, that's cut for that and that had to have some fusible on the back as well and then we have our d-ring that'll go on this and this is just a half inch silver d-ring uh, that i'll be using on this so we're going to get started and i'm going to uh, move the camera over by the sewing machine so that you can uh, see as we start to put this together so the first thing the pattern is going to have us do is to put our rickrack along the um, edge of the collar here. Uh, so I'm going to sew that on. I put red thread in so it'll kind of blend in with the top of this as I sew it on, but I'm just going to do a straight stitch um, right down the edge of uh, the rickrack. So we'll get that on next. And I've just kind of laid it out kind of where I want it to be on the collar itself. And then I'm just kind of making sure I kind of go right down the center of the rickrack itself. Kind of just attaching it onto the collar. And when I get to the end, I'll do a little knot and have it cut. And there I've attached my first piece of rickrack to half of the collar. So I'll trim this off. And then I will attach it to the other collar. And you'll want to make sure you have opposing collars too. So this is like each side of the collar. Make sure they're not like going in the same direction. You'll want to make sure that they're opposing because this will be one side of the collar and this will be the other side of the collar. Let's get that one on about the same place and you can always pin these down or use like a double-sided tape or something like that if you feel more comfortable not just holding it in place um, I've done it a few times so I don't feel too uncomfortable with just holding it in place and kind of guiding my machine to stitch it down I always stop with my needle down position and then kind of readjust my rick rack a little bit just to make sure I've got it going exactly where I want it. And there we have it. So now I have attached that to both sides. As you can see and that's done so then the rickrack gets put away we'll be using that again on the skirt uh, but we won't need it for um, the rest of this 
Once the Ricrac has been attached, then I'm going to take, and this is with the side with the fusible on it, then I'm going to take my other piece that doesn't have fusible, and I'm going to put that right sides together with that piece that I just put the Ricrac on. And I'm going to sew across the top, down the long side, and up the short side, and I'm going to leave this portion right here, which is for the neck, I'm going to leave that open. That'll be what I'll turn it through. Um, so I'm going to do top, long side, and up the short side, and then leave this neck area open. Um, so that's what we'll do next. And we're going to do a regular seam allowance, which is a quarter inch on this size. Some of her bigger sizes, you'll use 3 8 inch if you were making like an extra, extra large for a larger dog. Mine, I'm using the small pattern, so it's going to be quarter inch. And when I get to the point, I'm going to stop with my needle down and pick up those feet and then turn my piece and then continue up the other side. And then again, I'm going to turn and go across the top. And then do my knot in the end to cut. And then I've got it sewn, the two pieces I've got sewn together. So now I'm gonna trim the corners. Um, I'm gonna trim this corner here, just to kind of remove some of the bulk. And then of course, trim down here. Don't trim too close to your stitching because you don't want your stitching to come out when you turn it. You'll need a little bit in there. But you wanna just clip a little bit off the end, just enough to um, reduce the bulk when you turn it. When I'm turning something like this, especially when there's kind of a deeper point uh, like there is here, sometimes I'll get my needle nose pliers and then I'll take and I'll put those in down to the point, kind of just shuffle it down in there to the point and then carefully grab some of the material and just pull it through. And you have to be real careful because you don't want to tear the material or anything like that. But as you're turning it, you're just kind of going to give it a little bit of a, it's kind of more to hold it, I think, than it is to kind of pull it. But you can pull it through and then it'll turn uh, pretty easy using that. And then I'll get, I actually use a pair of chopsticks to actually kind of point out the, push out the point. And you may have to work with this a little bit to get this done, but um, you'll basically want to get it turned. And then once you get it all turned, um, the point kind of sticking out there and everything looks real good, then you'll uh, take this to the ironing board and press it. And now you can see that I've completed the Rick Rick on both of the collars. I've sewn them together and got them turned. Um, one thing is this point can be a little bit um, difficult and you might use a pair of tweezers uh, along with your chopsticks and maybe even a pointy turn, turn tool just to kind of get that as best you can but it's not going to be a point point it's going to be more of a rounded point um, but the collars are, are ready to attach on the body of the dress now. Now that we've completed making our um, collars we're going to attach them to the bodice of the dress and so we're going to use our pattern piece and there are uh, color-coded dots here that talk about where to place the collar and this red dot says dress a collar and this green dot says dress a collar so the it's going to be between those two dots so I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to mark right here on the fabric and this is a uh, one of those heat removable pens that if you heat it up it removes the mark um, so I'm going to mark those two spots so I know exactly where to place. And then I'm going to flip it over and do it the same thing on this side. You have to kind of lift it up and kind of see where the dot is. But right here and right here. And then once I've marked those, then I'm going to place this one on this side. And it goes from there to there. And then I'm going to put this one here from here to here. 
And then basically what I want to do is I want kind of the middle of, I know where the middle of this bodice is, and I kind of want them to kind of line up or come close to each other. So I'm going to kind of move them around just a little bit so that they kind of line up the way I want them to toward the, the uh, middle of that bodice. So I'm going to put a pin just to kind of hold these in place, the kind of the way that I want them to be shaped. And then we're just going to base them on, which means like an eighth of an inch along the edge right there, just to kind of base them on and get them attached to the bodice. On both sides. So now I have the collars attached to the bodice. Isn't that cute? I think it's going to be so adorable. Okay. Now it's going to have us put the bodice together. And again, we're going to have to mark this based on some markings that are here on the pattern. Uh, so I'm going to use my marker again and I'm going to pull this slightly up from the edge so that I can kind of see. But I'm going to mark it right here where this square dot is or the square, no, it's not a dot, it's a square. Mark that, and then I'm gonna turn this over, come over to this side, and mark it here as well. That is where we're gonna start and stop sewing around when we add in our other piece. So we're gonna take this piece, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pin these kind of out of the way, because we don't wanna sew on them or catch them in the seam. Um, so we're gonna bend these over, Want to keep it away from both seams, so you're going to just kind of try and get it scooched in the middle there and kind of pin those on, pin those down so they're out of the way. But just make sure they're not in either seam allowance there because you're going to go all the way around this. So, okay, so then you're going to put right sides together and then we're going to pin around here or clip you can use clips a lot of times I'll use clips so before I started sewing this I wanted to just make a couple of notes I did go ahead and make the marks here on this side and here on this side because it was kind of underneath and it was hard to see and then this is kind of what I do to clip around the edges to kind of hold that for me while I'm sewing so yeah so just take it really slow when you're going around the corners just to make sure you get a nice curve there um, and also up here where we put the collar so that you're just catching um, the edge of that collar, not the folded over part that we pinned underneath. So just kind of taking it nice and slow and doing my quarter inch seam allowance um, along this curve, um, trying to get that sewn in there. So I'm done sewing all the way around here. And so now what I want to do is I want to trim and clip, especially clip on these inner circles. Um, so I trim my corners. So usually I'll start down here with this piece right here and I will trim my corners off. Be sure you don't go too close to your stitching. So you get your corners trimmed there. And then what I'm gonna do here where this curve is, is I'm going to clip into the curve, not all the way to my stitching, but just a little bit to get, and you can see kind of a little bit, um, you know, I'm not going very far into that stitching um, or in so that I'm not catching the stitching, I should say. So just, just through that curve, you want it just a little bit there and then you're gonna come up and trim these corners. That's so that when you turn it, it's not as bulky. And sometimes I'll trim across these edges a little bit here just to kind of take some of that out. And then of course, I'm gonna put my notches in around this curve. And I'm going about where I've got about a quarter of an inch seam, I'm going maybe halfway so maybe a little over halfway so a little over an eighth here and then once i get that one done then i'm back to the next corner i'm going to trim that 
and then clip the inside curves on this one. And I usually start about where it the curve starts and then just kind of clip into the curves until it kind of flattens out again. And then clip our last corners. And we're ready to turn this. Okay, so now again, like I said with the um, turning of the tight places like where this is at like up here in this corner um we're gonna i i always use tend to use my needle nose pliers because i can get a hold of it and i can pull it out and my needle nose tends to hold the fabric pretty well and it doesn't tear it like in some cases um i've used tweezers before but they don't hold it as well as my needle nose so before i pull this one out i'm going to take my pin out and you should always put your pin with the and I didn't do it this time. Put your pin with the head of the pin toward the bottom, not toward the top, because it's harder to get a hold of when you put it that way. And then once you do that, I slide this in all the way to the top, grab a hold of <clears throat> a little bit of the fabric there on the top, just kind of stick that in there with my finger. And then gently, don't pull the material, just gently pull that out to turn that. And then I utilize, um, I use, this is chopsticks actually, but some people have uh, other turner tools that they use. I do have a pointy tool that I also use kind of once I get this turned uh, to give me my points if I need to. That's come along pretty good. I also find that if I kind of slide it into the corners, I can kind of get it to kind of pull um, out nicely. If you kind of slide it rather than poke it into the corners, you can kind of slide it into the corners. It's kind of a tip I've learned to kind of get that out. And then I might use my pokey tool. This is my wooden pokey tool, I call them. And maybe take that up and put that in my corners and make my corners... Uh, Get my corners just a little more, a little tighter in there. Okay, and then we're going to do that for all four of these. There's four, uh, two down here and one here um, that we need to turn. So now that I've got it all turned, um, it needs a good pressing. So we're going to take it over to the iron and we're going to press these curves so that they're flat and press this all down and make sure that our seams are um, lined up here. And so as soon as I get it pressed, I'll be right back. So I took it to the ironing board and I pressed it all out. And isn't it amazing how much it looks better with it being pressed? The other thing that you wanna do is you want to make sure that right here, and I usually do it from this side, you take this and fold that seam up into this and press this really good. And then you're folding this one over and matching the edge so that the two edges match together and they're pressed together. So you get um, this opening, but it's finished kind of with the folds. Um, so you wanna make sure that you do that as well because that's where we're gonna put the skirt in underneath there. Um, and then having these matched as well as you can match them along this fold is a uh, key because then um, when you put the skirt in and you sew that together, you're going to sew across that and you want the seam, you want the stitching to line up pretty well. So that is the bodice part ready to go. Uh, the next thing is to put the rickrack onto the skirt. So you're going to take one of the two pieces that you cut for the skirt and we're going to mark about where the rickrack is going to go. And again, if I had a, I had a fabric once where I had lines on my a skirt and I actually put the rick rack along the line so it wasn't exactly where they had them marked here but depending on your personal preference um, you're gonna mark uh, basically where you want your lines to be so I'm gonna take this and scooch it over just a little bit so that I can mark here and here so that's kind of that and then I'm gonna go on the other side and make the same markings here and here and then when I lay my rickrack across this 
I want to get it as straight as I can get it. Actually, probably would take this to um, my table and lay a ruler across this so that I have it nice and straight. So I'm going to lay my rick rack across here and line up the two lines. So, and it's pretty straight across there. I can kind of eyeball it and know, but you know, if you wanted to, you could take that and, and put your ruler down and make sure that you were um, exactly so many inches from the edge here to here, here to here, um, and make sure that that's about right. Um, I can kind of tell visually that that's okay, but you know, again, you can, uh, you can measure it to be sure. Now I'm gonna leave a little bit of um, rickrack on each end here. So I'm gonna pull it actually over a little bit and clip it so I have a little bit extra on each end. And there are two rows of rickrack on this. So I'm gonna do one at a time here. So for the first one. So I actually put a couple of pins in place to kind of help me hold that uh, where I wanted it. We'll sew the um, sew this first one on. Again, you're going to want to just kind of sew right down the center of the rick rack. There's a it goes back and forth, but you can kind of judge where the center of that is. And I am using the red thread again on top so that I can blend that in pretty well with the rick rack. second piece. Okay, and so I'm back and I have sewn on both pieces of the Rick Rack here on the skirt. And as you can see, I left a little bit out of each end. I don't want them cut right even with the edges. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the skirt together with the lining and we're going to do this similar to the way we did the collars and we're going to put the two pieces right sides together. And then we're gonna sew along this curved edge, not leave this one, the top open for turning, but you're just gonna sew along the curved edge. And again, that's gonna be your uh, quarter inch seam. So let me get this on here so they match up. You wanna make sure they match up. I'm gonna start over here and we'll do our quarter inch seam. So now I've sewn my quarter inch seam all the way around. Now we're going to actually turn this and then press it out. So this will give us our um, finished edge along the bottom of the skirt. So isn't that cute? It's looking so cute. This will be the outside. This will be the front. Look at that. That's looking so cute. So I'm gonna take it over to the ironing board and I'm gonna press it out. And then when I come back, I'm actually gonna top stitch along this edge to kind of uh, top stitch the seam. Um, and it gives it a nice decorative top stitch as well. Um, usually I do about an eighth of an inch in from the folded edge when I top stitch and I get my stitch length a little bit longer. My normal stitch length is about two and a half and I usually go about three to three and a half um, when I'm doing top stitching. Um, just looks better I think, um, but that's a personal preference. The stitches aren't quite as close together. Um, and for top stitching, you're not worried about holding it, the fabric together. You're just putting a decorative stitch really on and it's more to secure the seam. Now when I top stitch, I usually use my foot here as kind of a guide. I've moved my needle over 
um, a couple two three positions I know exactly where I need to move it you'll have to measure yours play with a piece of scrap fabric to figure it out but I use the inside of my foot here to run my fabric up against it helps me keep it straight and then I can put my um, eighth of an inch um, top stitch right along that so as you can see I'm keeping the edge of the fabric right along the edge of that foot as I'm top stitching down and around this and you're going to go right over the top of that rickrack and I changed back to my blue thread so that my top stitching is going to be in blue. I could have left it red. That would be kind of decorative and it's definitely a design decision that you can make. I've done that sometimes. You use con contrasting threads so it'll show up and you just have to be a little more careful with your stitching. You want to make sure that it doesn't go zigzaggy all over the place. but. Um, you know, again, that could be a design decision too, is to go zigzaggy all over the place. That we're gonna top stitch this on. And there you have it. So there's my top stitching all done there. You can see kind of, let me see if I can bring that up a little bit so you can see the top stitching there. Down. And that kind of just finishes the edge of that skirt. So now the bottom of the skirt is actually finished. And now we have to gather the skirt um, along the top so that we can attach it to the bodice. When we're gathering, we're going to actually just sew a line of stitching across this top here through both layers of the fabric. But it's going to be long. We want to make our stitches long so that it's easier to pull. I'm going to change my stitch length to 6.0. So that's my stitch length. So it's quite a long stitch length, more of a basting stitch length. And again, I'm only gonna go right along the edge. You want it to be fairly close to the edge so you can hide it. Um, so it definitely needs to be within your seam allowance. So I usually go, you know, maybe a little more than an eighth, but not quite a quarter of an inch in. And you want to make sure you don't tie off in the, at this end of it, okay? When you're here, you simply want to lift up your needle and your, your feet and pull it out. Give yourself plenty of string here, okay? Th plenty of thread. So I cut and probably leave a good six inches of thread here because this is what you've got to pull um, to make that uh, ruffle. And on this end, you know, you could have done a knot or you can tie it off either one, but you want this end over here to be um, knotted or you want it to be uh, so that it's not going to pull the threads through. So you should knot that end, but this end you don't want to knot. So then I'm going to grab one of the two and I usually grab my top thread, not my bottom thread. Just leave your bottom one hanging there and you're going to just start. You're gonna, I don't know if I can see this right, but you're gonna just start pulling the fabric, holding your thread, not try not to break it, but you're just gonna kind of start pulling your thread and your fabric. See how it kind of starts gathering along there? And you just wanna kind of move that gathering all the way down to the other end. So you're gonna add a little more gathering and keep pushing it down to the other end. Pull it. I hope you can see this. And I'm just gonna keep working with it and working with it. Get this gather pulled all the way to the other end here. You know, so I'm just kind of holding my thread. I'm not really yanking on it or pulling it tight because I don't want to break my thread or I have to start over. You break your thread, you start over. Trust me, I've done it. So you just kind of keep working that down and working that down. I know about how far I need to go because I've done a few of these um, and that's about as far as we go, but I will show you how you can determine how how far you are, you know, how skinny you need to make this. Um, basically, from your bodice, we'll go back to the bodice here and actually back to our bodice pattern here, okay? There's a little dot here. It's about an inch to an inch and a quarter, inch and a half from the square where we stopped sewing. So I'm gonna put that square right where we stopped sewing, which is right here. 
and I'm going to mark where this dot is. So that square is where I stopped sewing, right there. And I'm gonna mark where this dot is. So that's right there. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. Where I stopped sewing is where my square is. Right there, and then I'm gonna mark my dot, which is right here. Okay, so now I want to, so I marked it on the top, but I want to pull this out and I want to make sure I mark it on here too because it's going to be easier to see. But you want to make sure you mark all the way down into that seam allowance and right here. Okay. Now that's how wide your skirt should be gathered to. It needs to fit from this point down to this point. So you want to make sure that your skirt is gathered about that far and look at there it's almost perfect okay so i know about how much and you can you can take out your gathers by just kind of pulling it back this way and you know then the the, the gathers will come out um or you can tighten it up again by holding that top string only because we didn't hold the bottom one hold the top string only and just kind of adding your gathers back in there so once you have it gathered the way you want it now we're going to attach that to the body. And what we want to do is, because they're going to go like this, okay, we're going to do right sides together. So make sure your rick rack is here, make sure your body's here, and you're going to go like this to put right sides together. And you're going to pin a lot. But you're going to pin this end down here by the first mark. Let me see, there's a pin and first mark here. And then you're gonna pull this one, and this one is gonna mark down here at this mark. And then I'm going to make sure that I just, I ease that in all the way across there. Okay. So go ahead and pin that in and then kind of just put your gathers out so that it's kind of even all the way across. And then don't sew it yet because we have to put our um, D-ring in before we sew it down. So I'll be right back once I get uh, all this pinned in and we'll talk about the D-ring. So I have this all pinned down and then I'm going to take the piece that is for the D-ring which had the fusible um, woven interfacing here and I'm going to fold this over like this. There's lines on the pattern that shows me where to fold this and press that down really good which I've done. And then I'm going to do my top stitching along both sides of this. So let's get that top stitch. I've already uh, got my machine set to the longer stitch. And we're just going to go down each side. And I'll usually do one side and then kind of flip it over because it's so short. Just take a couple of stitches to get to the other side. And then flip it over and come back the other side. And that gives you a nice finish to your ring holder so then I will take the D ring itself and I'm going to put that on here and you want to put the flat side of the D ring to the inside where your fold is and then fold that over so now you have your your D ring holder connector and your D ring on here, and then we want to put it onto the onto your bodice here. Now it's going to come down. You want it to like come down and lay like this when you get it in. So we're going to put this in between the two sewing here, and we want to line that up. So we're actually going to open this up a little bit and take a pin out. And I'm going to put that right where I want it to be on the same. And 
Actually, her pattern actually has you attach this to the bodice before you put the skirt in, um, which probably would have been a good idea. So then I get that where I want it, flip it back over, and I'm going to attach that with a pin here right into that seam. So now I've got it attached right where I want it inside that seam. Um, and again, you probably easier to put it onto the bodice before we added the skirt on here, um, but it is doable to do it this way too. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this together, this seam together, but you wanna make sure this is out of the way. So make sure you fold that back or pin it back or do something because you don't want that in the way. So we're gonna sew from this end down here across. Now this is gonna be your full seam allowance. And I believe for the waist part, she, do, she goes a little bit deeper. So we're gonna do almost a 3 8 inch here. Be sure to back stitch both on the beginning and the end because you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is secured. You don't want the skirt coming out. All the way across so and then on and when you get to the end make sure you pull the little fold out so you don't don't sew in that fold and again back stitch front back and now you've attached your skirt to your bodice so it's starting to come together. So here is my um, my top and my skirt sewn together, my little D-ring in there. Um, and then um, we'll wanna trim to make sure, if you have any threads that are showing, like your gathering stitches or things like that that, that are showing through here, you can pick them out now. Um, I, sometimes I won't get, I'll have my gathering stitches will kind of show or something or threads like this and you can pick those out and trim them up. Um, and then uh, get ready to put um, this seam together and then we'll top stitch around that. Now when I get ready to put this seam together, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna cover any of that um, stitching that I used for my gathering stitches and also make sure that it's as close to the edge and you can kind of feel it with your fingers try and pull that so that it's it's the edges are close to each other um, front and back and then I usually take this and I will flip this open and I've got some double-sided tape here and this stuff is the best thing since velcro I swear I use it all the time, especially around zippers and things like that. Um, and then, so I'm gonna run a strip of this across the bottom here on my folded piece. And this is on the piece that does not have the skirt attached to it. Okay, and once you get it on, press it down really good. And then you can peel the paper up off of it. It gives you the other side of the sticky tape. And this is where I wanna make sure that I'm pulling this down and making sure that it goes evenly across the back. Okay, and just kind of press that in place. And so that should cover any of your stitching and then you can kind of feel it to make sure that it kind of feels like it's even with the front. Because you want those two pieces to kind of be even because you're gonna be stitching across the front here, but you want it to kind of feel, yeah, so that feels pretty good. So you can kind of tell where it ends. And yeah, this end is not quite where it should be. Make sure that that's even with that end right there. I wasn't quite feeling it. Okay, that's better. Okay, so once you get that stuck down, now you're gonna turn it back over and you're gonna sew from this side, all right? And we're gonna stitch this entire way around the bodice, okay? So I normally start here 
and this is a top stitch so it is a three to three point five stitch length uh, about an eighth of an inch from the edge so that's the stitch that I'm going to be using for this and I'm going to start over here by this uh, end over here and just go real slow to make sure you stay straight coming across and then it's going to start here where it's going to go through multiple layers of fabric as you're getting your skirt on and you might want to slow down as you're going across that extra thickness there where you've got your d-ring connector come across here And then usually when I get to the end here, I will stop with my needle down. And then I'm gonna look at the back. Now see the front looks pretty good. And I'm gonna look at the back and see how did my stitching go across the back. I'm gonna kind of turn this over. And look, that is pretty good. You know, so it's right there along the edge. Um, right almost a little bit too far in here, but not bad, I mean, for this. Um, that's actually pretty good um, and it covered all my stitching and it, it definitely went you don't the thing you don't want is you don't want it to be so far up that you're when you when if this is to lift up that the seam would come out so and this is covered very well so I would say that's a a good go and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew the rest of the way around when I come to the collars I'm gonna lift it up and sew under rather than over the top of the collars. So I'm gonna stitch uh, the eighth of an inch along here, and then I'll lay the collar back down, keep going, come over here, lift the collar up, go under, and then all the way around to where I started. Okay, so I finished my top stitching all the way around. Isn't it looking cute? This is just so adorable. I love it. Um, so there's one other thing that I wanna do, because these are gonna be kind of floppy, um, I might want to take a tacking stitch just to kind of hold those in place and that would just be a couple two three stitches you could make them with your machine or by hand right here toward the end of these um, points the bow will go over the top of this but it's not going to hold it down so I'm just going to take a couple of just right at the end I'm not even going to hardly move my machine I'm just going to let it do a couple of stitches and then cut those stitches right off because I want that to stay in place. So I'll do one and then I'll do the other here. Don't want them to go anywhere. So just a small little tacking stitch. Uh, it'll get covered up by the bow so it's it's not critical that they're, you know, perfectly placed so that you lose the color because I, I mean you can see that I've got you know you can see the blue thread here on the white and but it keeps them tacked down so that they're not going to pull up so I usually do that and then we have a couple more things to do we need to put our velcro on and then put our bow on and we'll be all done so I've got some red velcro I think I'm going to use so we're going to put the velcro on next so when you do your Velcro, um, you want to give it um, probably an inch to an inch and a half here um, because you want to be able to make sure that it's fully adjustable so that, you know, dogs are different in sizes. And even though you've measured yours and you've cut this, um, the size that you want, um, dogs can get fatter if you give them too many treats. And you might need a little room on this, uh, on this Velcro. So I usually go an inch to an inch and a half and cut my pieces. You'll want one for this, and you'll want another one for the neck, okay? And so basically you pull them apart. So you have four pieces. You've got the rough side, and you've got the um, softer or smooth side. We're gonna put the smooth ones away. I'm just gonna use the rough ones to begin with. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew one on the top here, okay? And this is gonna be on the top, and one on the top here, okay? So we need those to be on the tops, 
All right, and I changed my thread over to red so I can just sew this right down. So we're gonna just kind of center it right there on the end. So pivot with my needle down, sew across. the first piece of Velcro. And as you can see, I left the blue in the bobbin here uh, so that it kind of blends in on this side, but then I had the red in the top so that you can kind of hide the stitching um, on the red Velcro. And we're gonna put this one on too. Okay, once you get those two sewn on, Okay, they're gonna come around and they're gonna do like this, okay? So you need the other side of the Velcro to actually go on the backs because they have to attach like this. So we're gonna turn this over. We've already done these two sides, so now we need to do the, these two sides and we're gonna do on the back. So you're gonna sew here and you're gonna sew here on the back so that when they go together, then they will flip over and attach properly, okay? and I'll get those sewed on. And now I have my Velcro all sewed on. So there's the little waist part and the collar part or the neck part. And you can see that it's coming along pretty well. So now we're gonna put the bow on. That's the last thing to do is to put the bow on. So for this particular bow, you have three different pattern pieces. You have the bow tie part, the actual bow part, and then the actual part that goes around the bow, kind of the, the knot of the bow. So you've got three different parts. And what you're gonna do with these two parts, we'll pull this over here, uh, this bow part, we're gonna put right sides together and we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch all the way around. We're gonna do the same thing with the actual bow itself. We're gonna put right sides together and we're gonna sew all the way around, okay? So I know you're thinking to yourself, because I thought this to myself is, well, how is that gonna work? Um, but she has a really cute little way of being able to do this. So you pick this up and you separate these fabrics. Sometimes it can be a little catchy to try and do that, but you wanna separate the fabric so they're, they're not together, okay? And then you're gonna actually take and clip one of these open, okay? So you're gonna make like a, a hole. You don't want it to be too big, but you don't want it to be too small because you're gonna turn through that hole, okay? So now you can see, and I need to make that a little bit bigger. You don't want to go all the way to where you've stitched, obviously, but you want the hole needs to be big enough to actually be able to turn through. I thought this was clever when I saw this. I'm like, oh, I always use it to leave an end open for turning, but this is kind of an interesting way of doing it. And it gets all four of your corners very straight. We turn that through. And then this is when I go get my little pointy tool. And again, I kind of slide into that corner. I think it helps to kind of slide into the corner rather than just trying to poke it out. Just kind of slide it down along that edge. You get a fairly decent point there by doing this. And you're going to do this with both the um, tie, bow tie, and the bow itself. So let me get those turned and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I got mine turned and I took them over and pressed them. You can still see my uh, cut there a little bit, but I've got them all turned. Um, and then I took my little 
um, knot and I actually uh, press that over similar to like we did the D-ring but we're not going to top stitch this one just fold the two sides over so it's kind of even and then what I usually do is I want to put a little fray check on these openings to keep them from fraying too bad so I'll put just a little bit along here and then kind of smooth it in with my finger so I just want it to kind of hold you kind of gather it up but it's always a good idea to kind of put a little bit of that in there just to make sure that it's not going to come fraying out on you okay so now we're going to gather this up and i usually just kind of start tri-folding this kind of like that and then i'll put a clip on it to kind of hold it where i want it to be and then I'm gonna do the same thing with this, kind of tri-fold it up. Kind of want the bow to be, okay? And then they're gonna kind of go together. So we're gonna put the bow and this together. Like the bow kind of goes on top, sort of, um, but you'll want to kind of hold that in there, if you can see this. And then I'm going to take this tie, and I'm going to put it around what I've folded. Try to hold that as tight as you can get it in there. Come around to the back. You might make sure that you've got it pretty even across there. Um, and again, I kind of like my bow to be more on top. So I'm going to kind of put that down underneath. Okay, and then once you get it the way you want it, you're going to take and you're going to put a pin. And I usually put it lengthwise here to hold this. So going from here toward this just to kind of hold that in place and then you're going to want to stitch right across there don't catch your bow or your um tie in it but you want to stitch right across here and i usually go back and forth with my stitching a couple of times because i want it to hold um but i also want to get my pin out of there so i'm going to just i'm going to start usually move my needle over as far as i can get it to one side I can get as close to that as I can. Okay, once I get it started, I pull that pin out of there. And then I'll go back and forth a couple of times over that spot just to kind of secure it. And then at that point you have you have it on there. You're gonna trim this obviously. But before you trim it, just make sure that you've got it centered exactly where you want it because you can still kind of turn it in there and twist it in there a little bit. Um, kind of shape the way you want your bow. Um, want the little bow points to come down and I want my bow to kind of be on top. So I'll just kind of make that the way I want it to be, just kind of fussy with it a little bit until it's just how I want the little bow to show up and almost there okay so that's kind of eh, I like that that works for me there's my little bow and then I'm going to clip this off because I won't need this excess back here make sure you don't clip into your stitching but just beyond the stitching leave just a little bit there and then we're gonna attach the bow to the dress. So you can choose how you wanna attach your bow to your dress. Um, it's gonna go right here at the end where your, your uh, collar comes together and yet above where your D-ring is. Um, I usually will punch a hole and I will put a rivet through here to be able to attach it. You can sew it on by hand or you can sew it on with your machine, uh, whatever you want to do to finish that up. And then um, we're done. We've made a little 
4th of July dog dress. So uh, the next picture you see will actually be Lily wearing this cute little dress. So stay tuned. I'll be back. And here is Princess Lily wearing the dress that we just completed making, the 4th of July dress. Um, she is dressed to party. And if you're interested in purchasing one of these uh, custom dresses, please go to my Etsy shop and you can enter your dog's dimensions there, measure around the neck and put like two fingers in when you measure it. So it's like a collar. Um, measure around her girth, which is around her body, right behind those front legs. And then you can measure from about the nape of the neck down to where the tail starts across her back. And with those measurements, I'll be able to make the dress to fit her just like this one fits Lily. And I appreciate you guys coming along with me today on this. And hopefully you've enjoyed how to make this. And uh, visit sophieandfriends.com for the patterns. And we'll see you next time. Thanks again.